So for this DIY, you will need swimsuit material, lining, tracing paper, some markers, pins, elastic, a swimsuit or bikini. Later on, I switched mine out for swimsuit bottoms instead of a one piece, scissors, and a ruler. Start off by cutting a piece of tracing paper that will be big enough for your bottoms. Fold your tracing paper in half and draw a line at the very bottom. Take your bottoms and fold it in half at the crotch seam. Meet the seam to the bottom of the line and then you could start tracing around the front of your bathing suit. I decided to make my bottoms high-waisted so I added about 5 more inches to the top and then made a slight diagonal for the side seam. You will be adding elastic to the top opening and the leg opening so add about a seam allowance of half an inch and the other seams which is the side seam and the crotch seam just add a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Place another piece of folded tracing paper on top of your front patterned piece and trace the top and the side and take your bathing suit bottom and match up the bottom of the side seams. You then want to trace the back of the bathing suit and draw a line where the crotch seam is. The top was easy, I actually just freehanded it because it's basically just a shape. So I started off with the top width to be 6 inches and the bottom width to be 10 inches and the length in between ended up being 7 inches. And I just drew a line down the center to make sure all my measurements were equal. I decided to add elastic to the side opening so I added a seam allowance of half of an inch and at the top and bottom I will be threading through a spaghetti strap. So I will be adding an inch for seam allowance. For each pattern, you should have one swimsuit piece and one lining piece, giving you six pieces at the end. Take your swimsuit lining bottoms with the right sides kissing and match up the crotch seam. You're going to want to pin and sew the crotch seam and the side seams. Repeat for the outer swimsuit bottoms. Take your lining bottoms, flip it inside out, and slip it over your shell bottoms. Grab your elastic and roughly measure around the opening of the top and the legs. You then want to pin the elastic to the very edge of the opening and use a zigzag stitch to hold it down in place. Repeat this process to the leg openings and for the top, repeat it to the sides. Remember to sew the elastic only to the lining side. Fold over your elastic edge one more time so that it covers the elastic. Do another zigzag stitch on top of that to hold it in place. Now for the top, you want to fold over about half an inch and then fold it over again so that you can make a tunnel. Sew down this tunnel using a straight seam and repeat to the bottom side. In my DIY slip dress tutorial, I go step by step on how to make spaghetti straps. However, it's really easy. All you do is cut a long strip of fabric, probably about one inch in width, fold it in half, and do a straight seam down the center. I like to make my spaghetti straps about a quarter of an inch wide. Then you use the spaghetti strap tool to turn it inside out. Poke a safety pin through one of the ends of the spaghetti strap. Use the safety pin to help you thread the string through the tunnel. Once you got it all the way through, center out your string and you are completely done with your halter top. Oh, 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 oh,